Welcome you guys, Shimano Altegra 6600 uh, from crankset, shifters, brakes, through the wheels and even the pedals. We've got the complete Altegra group set and we're gonna put it on this bike. Stork Vision Lite, extremely nicely done frame. So we've got a beautiful frame set, great components. It's all used. It's gonna be only $500 project and it's gonna be able to race anybody on this bike for so little money. On our community tab, uh, I've put some polls lately and you wanted me to go through the whole process with my comments. So I'm gonna just walk you through the whole process of building this bike. It's not gonna be just silence and music. It's gonna be me bothering you all the time. Let's do this. We've got all the tools ready to be used. I'm gonna be showing you all the tools while I go through the components. The wheels are there, the frame is there, we're gonna clamp it just in a second. Everything is almost ready. Uh, we're just gonna put some grease or the anti-seas on the threads. And that's it, let's do it. Almost always I'm starting with the seat post clamp and the seat post because then I can clamp the seat post into the bike stand and my frame will be stable, we'll be able to do anything around it. So let's start with it. Let's prepare the bike stand. Let's weigh the frame. 1525 grams. Which means that this frame is about 700 grams heavier than the super light carbon frame, but this is bulletproof. And it's also solid enough for heavier riders. These two paint brushes, unlike those up there, are for greasing. And here I have my overall use grease. I use it for most of the parts actually. Seat post clamp, 22 grams. I already have some anti-seize grease on the thread here. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease, just regular grease around here because this is uh, really good for some noises. Sometimes the seat post clamp likes to make noises and putting a little bit of grease here might prevent that. I do it only on the aluminum frames. Okay. Most of the seat post clamp will have kind of a lip right here, which has to be supported on the upper edge of the seat tube, see? like this. Alloy seat post Ricci Pro, 291 grams. Carbon one would be about less than 200 grams. Now I'm gonna use the so-called carbon paste. It's called carbon paste because uh, it's mostly used for carbon but you can use for aluminum parts. I'm using it here because I was cleaning and polishing the seat post. Uh, it was a little bit rusty, if you will. Uh, so this carbon paste will allow me to use also a little bit less torque on the seat post clamp and I can be sure that the seat post will not be going down. We're gonna need a huge Allen key for this one, six millimeters. I'm inserting the seat post now, very easy job. Nice, nice, okay. And I'm only clamping it so that it will just hold because um, I will adjust everything better, like the saddle to be straight later on. Okay, now I can finally stabilize my frame in the bike stand. Now you can mount different parts just as you like, uh, but I'm not starting with the parts which, will, which would make more difficult for me to move around the frame, which is certainly the wheels, um, the, the fork, the handlebars. So I'm gonna start with just some screws, derailleurs, the saddle, um, and then the bottom bracket, the crankset, and then the headset, the fork, and the handlebars. So first, the bottle cage screws and their spacers. Four screws, two spacers, 18 grams. It's time for the anti-seize. 
putting the anti-seize on these screws is quite important in my opinion because uh, as you can see those old threads are already a little bit rusty you don't want these screws get stuck in the threads because then the whole insert might be damaged and that would mean much more work around your frame so anti-seize here good idea here surprisingly three millimeters allen key usually we use four millimeters for these screws i'm not using a lot of torque here you don't have to someone used these spacers for assembling the bottle cage here on the seat tube but i'm not sure these are original and i'm not sure i really need those especially that i don't use the bottle cage for now so i'm not going to use these boom boom time for my bottom bracket thread it my friends thread it many bike companies now are going back to the threaded one okay uh -huh. shimano altigra bottom bracket 97 grams 45 45 and six a little bit of grease on these two seals will make these two joints watertight that means that the water from the frame will not get inside the bearings uh -huh. and now important thing we've got the right side the drive side and we've got the left side the non-drive side and these arrows show us how to tighten those two parts right side right side of course on the bikes with the internal cable routing i'm gonna make sure i've routed everything i should before assembling the bottom bracket but that's not the case here Now how to tighten this one? You can use such a tool, but then you need a wrench for it, which is not my favorite type of the tool. I would rather like to use such a tool. See, it's bent even, okay? So I don't have to connect anything and it holds while I'm tightening. But also, this one is pretty cool. So option number one with the wrench. Option number two, with the part which is centering my tool, very handy. Option number three, okay? We use quite a lot of torque here. So if you have, especially if you have carbon frame clamped into the bike stand or through the seat post, uh, which is uh, made out of carbon, be very cautious of doing such a move. You don't wanna crack anything. So make it stable. That's fine. Left side, tightening direction. If you cannot find the connection between the threads, you can always back off a little bit and try again. Yep. And now such a trick. Shifting cable slider, three, five. I'm always taking care of my slider. I want it to be very slick, like slippery, but not sticky. A WD-40 will be also very good for this, for this job. Okay. Anti-seize on this screw, which will almost always be wet or dirty is a must okay but first just look at these beautifully done uh, wells uh, interesting thing here's the serial number this is kind of some factory number but it is partially covered with this weld 
it's important to put it in the right direction, remember. Okay, this cable will go this way and up to the front derailleur and this one through this slider to the chainstay. And we can see also that this screw was here. Looking good. And as you can see, I did it before installing the crankset. Better access. It's time for my beautiful jewelry. Shimano Altigra FC, so this is the crankset, 6603, so triple crankset, 175 arm length, 835 grams. You don't have to do it, but I like to have everything very, very slippy. Greasing, uh, we don't need the grease here at the middle of the axle. I don't know why some people put it there. Well, it will be there because I'm gonna put it here around the um, bearing contact area and also the spline. I don't like putting too much grease everywhere. See how clean all this is? Just remember sometimes we use spacers here Ooh, babe. Anti-seize is already put on these two balls. And remember, don't put it like this, put it like that. Yeah. Now we have such a nice little nut. And we need this tool for this nut. Uh, the newer models, the later models will have this a little bit deeper. Why don't you shout, Danny, Danny, one spacer, one spacer there. Of course we need this one here. Why? We don't want a gap here, because otherwise, how would I compress everything? So I'm putting this one, and then we're gonna compress the bearings for no play and smooth operation. I'm not putting grease here, because it will attract the dirt. Okay, this is nice. The newer one will also have additional protection, uh, but this one doesn't have it. How this works? Let's put too much compression. This is too tight. Okay, okay, we don't have any play here, but we have smooth operation. Just remember that the bearings, uh, which are not dry inside and not ceramic, will not spin for very long. And that's perfectly fine. And now each bolt should be evenly and equally tightened to 12 through 15 Nm by a torque wrench. Let's set about 13. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten one screw and then the other. I'm gonna do it bit by bit because those two will work on each other. You see, I feel that when I tighten one, the other one gets loose. Okay. Let's go back and see the other one. It's okay. Fine. There will be no noises after such a way of tightening. Remember to go back to zero. Moving forward. Barrel adjusters. Seven grams. These screws were stuck a little bit in their threads, but now they will be working beautifully. These allow to adjust the cable tension. After threading all the way in, I go back a little bit, a couple of turns 
to be able to adjust uh, the tension both ways. Okay. And back a little. It's time for the saddle and that's going to be the only part on this bike which I don't like and I would personally replace it. I just don't do it for the sake of my $500 budget. I'm gonna set the position on the, of the saddle when the bike stands on its wheels. Okay, time for the derailers. This is the example of a front derailleur that would be assembled directly to the mounting of, on the frame but as we don't have the direct mount system here we're gonna use the clamp and then the front derailleur is as you can see tightened here and this is also just the pre-assembly because we don't have the chain yet i'm looking at the old marking mm -hmm. and i'm trying to get my cage parallel to the chain ring. Front derailleur, 142 grams. The rear derailleur hanger, 15 grams. Here we have small screws and a low torque. So we're gonna use Loctite. Yep, boom. Might be four or three Newton meters of a torque here. The rear mag, 216 grams. And now carefully. Okay, let's see on the other side. This is the screw that will adjust the gap between the cassette and the guide pulley. Alrighty. Front brake, 165. Rear brake, 165. Front brake with the longer mounting bolt for the fork, 170. The brake with a shim here, it's got to be able to move here for adjustment and the mounting bolt on the other side. I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm not replacing the housing. I'm just gonna make the old cables work smoother. The cables look very good actually, but I'm also gonna make them a little bit more slick. This time I'm gonna use wax. This doesn't work well for my chains. Uh, it doesn't come between all the chain parts well and the chain gets dry quickly. But I think because this is dry, it can be good for the cable. Cleaning first. It wasn't very clean, the front one. I'm applying the wax, but then I will wipe it off. Just gently. Okay. 
cool. It's time for my shifters. I'm gonna use such a trick. The weight, the right one, 232. The left one, triple, 229. The left shifter is the front brake, means shorter cable. Now watch me. Yeah. And I have the handlebars just over my table so that I can have my shifter supported. Now this nut should go on this thread. I also need to make sure that this housing goes into its place. It does. It was a little tricky but I found it and I got it now. So the housing is in the right place. My nut is in the right place. This is looking good. I'm leaving this hood open because uh, I'm gonna be adjusting them uh, very precisely when the handlebars are on the bike. The other side now. Okay. We've got the other side too. The handlebars are ready. So I'm mounting the headset so that I can put the fork on, so that I can put the stem on, so that I, so that I can put the handlebars on. Two headset bearings, 37 grams. And the rest, 11 grams. Time to weigh the fork. This is the carbon alloy fork, 616 grams. So it's very easy to make the bike lighter by putting the full carbon fork, about 350 grams. Putting the headset together, we have the lower bearing, the upper bearing. This is the 118, both uh, top and bottom. There's no tapered system on this uh, machine yet. We've got a little bit of gap right here. Um, the silver metal you see in it is not the bearing. The bearing is completely hidden in the head tube. Uh, but this is the, like, the lower, the bottom part of its uh, races. Here are the housings. We've got shifting and shifting housings uh, from the handlebars. This is the shifting housing to the rear derailleur and rear brake. Let's weigh it. 58 grams. So this is the weight of the housings except for those uh, that are already under the bar tape. Let's mount the front brake. I'm replacing the last part of the shifting 
uh, housing and the last part of the rear brake housing but I'm not gonna simply use these as a measurement for the length because probably or maybe I will change the length I'll decide in the process these bar adjusters don't allow to put the ends on the housing so it's gonna look like this after a while it doesn't look nice but it has to be like that I'm just pre-assembling the cable lightly. Now the housing for the rear brake. Mm -hmm. Now I'm checking the, the length of the original housing. Um, it doesn't seem too uh, short, but when I start braking, this is too short. This is too short. So we have too, too much of a friction between the cable and the housing. I'm gonna make it maybe one inch longer. This is going to be the new one. Gonna start here. Measuring. Maybe just slightly shorter. Yeah, it's going to be breaking beautifully. Same story, the, the end doesn't go into the barrel. It has to be the endless. Mm -hmm. The longer you have the housing, the shorter the cable becomes so maybe maybe I'm gonna need to replace the cable beauty here I have clean and pre-looped cables pre-looped by me these are used ones the right shifter that's the rear derailleur uh, and the longer cable just remember to put it into the highest gear like this okay not allowing the cable to touch the floor okay boom now the housing I have just one end uh, on the other is off so that the cable will easier go through Mm -hmm. Now the end. How is it going to be turning? Now the slider. Now I'm checking the original housing length. Maybe slightly longer. I'm always making sure that this Teflon tube inside hasn't been closed yep new endings gotcha and back a little Okay, let's check it. Ooh, baby. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Check this out. Super light operation. Good. Same thing from the other side. When the cable is bent, when you are reusing used one, it's always a little bit more tricky, but we gotta make it. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, now the end and through the slider. Okay. Yeah. 
right, we've got the pedals. Let's put the pedals on. The Altigra pedals are 310 grams. Okay. The pedal will be very handy during shifting adjustment. The cassette weighs 245. Altigra front wheel, 692 grams. Continental Ultra Sport with the inner tube, 25 millimeters wide, 360 grams. These are used tires, so I'm gonna make sure there's nothing inside. I like to match the Continental Ultra Sport with the valve. Yeah! I didn't give you the weight of the rear wheel only. With the tire and the inner tube, 1305 grams. Let's put the cassette on. And let's finish this build. Then the cassette, you want to find the larger gap between these splines. It's right here. This is 10 speed, so spacer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 10 speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, you won't be able to put it just backwards. It only fits the right way. Cool. The rear quick release is not Altigra, unfortunately. Somebody must have lost it. Let's put the wheels on. Can you see this? It's empty, I love it. 25 millimeters um, tire is okay for these older Altigra caliper brakes. Guys, there's only the chain that's left and we can adjust the shifting and go. In those days, Shimano didn't have directional chains, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna use the quick link, so I'm removing one extra link. Okay. Mm -hmm. This arrow indicates the direction of chain movement when it's here at the top, not below the chain stay. Okie dokie. Now I'm gonna make the cassette shiny. Now let's check the gears. I need more tension on my cable. Okay, let's see now. Yeah, but just see on the lowest gear. Mm -hmm. 
This wasn't happening when the oil was on the chain. Now after shake in the degreaser, it's more visible. It's more obvious. Oh, let's look the chain. And now a little bit coloring with the wax. Now all the bolts that I was only pre-assembling before, I need to tighten correctly now. The front derailleur cable assembly, rear mech cable, front mech assembly, it's okay. The clamp for the front mech, it's okay. The brakes, I have the wheels so that I can now calibrate them. It's working super light. Now the front. Ta-da! No, I'm putting the bike on the floor now. Setting the bars straight. Checking the play on the headset, it's cool. Now the saddle height. Now the handlebars. Shifters. I'm gonna readjust the rear uh, brake cable. Now the weight of the bike with the pedals is 9.04. So uh, the bike itself without the pedals would be about 8.7. Come on outside guys, Stork Vision Light, 8.7 kilograms, the bike only just over 9 kilograms with the pedals. Two important things about this project, Stork Vision Light is the aluminum with beautifully shaped uh, welds and smoothened welds uh, by Stork, German manufacturer. They no longer make uh, aluminum road bikes, which is such a shame, everything is plastic now. This is uh, the, the frame uh, which will be suitable for heavy riders because it's very, very, very solid. 1500 grams. Uh, you can easily go with much, much uh, less weight on this bike by simply replacing the fork and the saddle. That would be the things uh, I, would, I would think about. Otherwise, Altegra shifters, Altegra brakes, Altegra wheels, Altegra crank set, Altegra um, front and rear mech, Altegra pedals. Beautiful. We have complete Shimano Altegra 6, 600 group set. So this is a piece of history, but it's still so good. You can race on it. You can absolutely crush people uh, on this one in the races and the 25 millimeters um, tires fit in, which is great because I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade um, these for 23 millimeters tires. So it's great. Let me know what you think, guys, and see you in the next project.